Ah, the villager grind. Am I right, guys? It's so overpowered that every Minecraft player does it at some point, but it's so annoying that it gets to the jibs of every single Minecraft player as well. Um, and while we are doing it right now, probably not every single Minecraft player does it to this extent and to this <laughs> massive scale. But we are doing it and we are committed. And actually, this project has been great because it's have uh, it has had me... Uh, well, it has kept me like very motivated to play Minecraft. As you know, I love doing redstone, and this this project actually forces me to do a lot of redstone, and, and I'm really enjoying it uh, playing in my in creative, doing also all these systems. But so far, um, this is the second district that we've done. Uh, if you remember last episode, we built this big one right here, and originally all of the districts I was gonna do the same size, but then I thought I have never. Uh, used like for example a leather worker or a a shepherd. Uh, those I have never used uh, those villagers. So why would I need 32 of those villagers if I have never needed like a single one, right? So instead, the rest of the modules are gonna be 16 villagers, half of the capacity of the big ones, except for the clerics one and the masons ones, which um, are gonna be right there and on the other side, right over there. Uh, now you may be wondering why do I have the clerics right here already if <laughs> they're gonna be in the big modules that we built uh, over there. Well, that's because I'm figuring this project out as we go. I'm, I'm putting stuff together as we go. So uh, I decided that after I had built this little module here. But anyways, if you remember from last episode, I said that I want this system to be able to... Uh, well, to handle the movement of villagers and be able to move the villagers within the modules or outside from the district to other districts. So, yeah, once we have the other uh, districts built, the bigger ones, we're going to move all the clerics over there. Uh, there's no rush in doing that. And also, I've been collecting a lot of redstone to be able to keep them going with this project because we need a lot of it. And yeah, from that you can tell I've been busy off camera, but also, look at this, I've been more than busy, I mean, look at that. We have the villager uh, breeding system already done here, it's a, it's a very small one, I don't need anything more than this. Um, it's completely automated, of course, we can request the villagers, we can also detect when there are villagers inside of the system to know when we can request any. And we even have a shulker box unloader uh, back here to be able to load entire shulker boxes of minecarts here to the system and then the empty shulkers come down here in this barrel. Um, unfortunately I don't have a lot of iron, actually this is the only shulker I could do of minecarts, I could fill up, up with minecarts. Because I'm completely out of iron, hopefully we can tackle that today. Um, also, yeah, I've been doing this little rail line and that one down there because so far I've been doing this whole process manually let me sleep real quick because I don't have the rail lines the, the actual uh, official rail lines in place just yet give me a second alrighty so yeah the official rail lines the official uh, control panel that will guide the, the villagers wherever we want them to go uh, it's not done yet hopefully we can also do that today uh, it shouldn't be that hard, but it's gonna take quite a while, probably. Um, but other than that, yeah, I've been doing it manually. I've been um, kind of... Well, I put that little rail up there Ed, so that the villagers fall down, and they fall down around here, probably. Um, I have this rail line that will use up the momentum that they co have coming up from there. They come all the way to here. They take the... the the Bruin uh, stand as their workstation, and I can just trade with them until unlocking all of their trades. I have a ton of emeralds, so that's not a problem. Uh, afterward, I just push them. Uh, actually, I have installed the temporary bottom, but originally I was just pushing them uh, this way. They come here, they land into this rail. Uh, they uh, stop right here on this rail to be zombified. And yeah, you saw that in the intro. I can just 
come down here and push them that way if I want to zombify them again. Or I can push them that way if I want them to go into the clerics district. The temporary clerics district, of course. <laughs> so that's the way I've been doing it. But of course, that's super tedious. So we want to automate this a little bit further today. And the last system that I've been working on uh, off camera is this little automatic automatic uh, brewing system for weakness potions. Uh, it's a completely customized design. Uh, I just did it on creative, I think yesterday or before yesterday. And yeah, I've been filling it up with bottles and gunpowder. Fermented spider eyes is a bit difficult. That's why I haven't used it. I haven't turned it on. Uh, because we have a lot of spider eyes, right? That's not a, tr a problem. We have a farm for that. We also have a lot of brown mushrooms, but we're missing a lot of sugar. So I planted that temporary farm that's, yeah, been providing me for um, not a lot of sugar. So I want to expand it as we as we work here. Um, so that in one go I can complete like the whole, what is it, seven stacks that we need. And yeah, afterward, I, I would probably decide a, a big sugar ca sugar cane farm that we can install somewhere else, probably in the pharmacy land. Uh, not today, of course, but yeah, that's that's what I've been up to off camera, guys. As you can see, it's been it's been a busy week for me. But surely, guys, the grind doesn't end up right there, cause uh, well, the last time the uh, the last video we made the new shulker farm finally. <laughs> <laughs> I've been complaining about it like for three episodes, but we finally did it last episode and that means I could finally finish the rainbow tower system. Oh, well, not all, the, not all the system, not the entire system because we're missing the uh, the little dispensers for the gum powder and of course the systems down here that go down here. But like the main systems, the, one that, the ones that really were um, complicated, this one's right here are finally completely done guys and i can actually show them to you i do not have uh enough the ice and enough ingredients to fill them up so i'm just using renamed items effect two effect oh effect two and effect one uh same for down here we have effect two and effect one remember this is a rocket factory so we have uh effects we have modifiers and we have dyes that we can use to craft rockets that's um colorful rockets not the ones for flying we have modifier one two three and of course in total there are four modifiers so there they are and then all the dice here um i didn't rename them with the with the dice na na die names i just put one two three up to the 12 dice that we're gonna use in all four sides so those are the the items that we're using and if we go down there it's actually kind of difficult to go down this latch here the power the water pushes you upward but it should be possible hopefully oh come on almost there we go there we go <laughs> uh yeah so let's go down there and down here, if we activate the system, we should be seeing uh, the things falling down through these powder snow. So, yeah, right now we don't have a proper activation system. I just have this lever with this piston. And as you can see, soon enough, we should be seeing some items falling through. There we go. <laughs> okay, well, that was a terrible rocket. But we have one effect, effect one, and four dice two different ones and two single ones that's to make a firework star if we were to activate the system once again we should get the ingredients for a second firework let's toss these ones out so that we can see the difference and there we see them coming okay this is a better one not really <laughs> it's as bad as the other one uh we have just one modifier instead of one effect but we can actually get a modifier and an effect uh together or i think it was two modifiers i don't remember um in total we always get four dice for each rocket so yeah that i just wanted to show you that this system is finally done um, I'm gonna include, of course, the dispensers uh, at the bottom here. Every that every time we'll dispense a gunpowder and yeah, gunpowder. 
actually just a gunpowder because down here we're gonna have the ones that dispense the gunpowder and the paper for the actual rocket so this is basically a fireworks uh, rocket star and then down here we're gonna have oh i cannot go down oh, there we go <laughs> i'm having trouble with scaffolding today uh yeah down here we're gonna have all the systems that will allow us to random i mean to uh time the the um the randomization to basically activate the whole thing and all that but that's that's another project that i've been working on uh of camera guys come on guys i keep talking and talking and it's been 10 minutes of me showing you what i've been doing of camera and we have done nothing in the episode <laughs> you don't stop me guys come on no i'm just kidding um but yeah i i do i did took a, a long time talking but anyways, let's get some. Let's get onto something productive, right? So, uh, I've marked out this kind of semicircle, and with such a big lay layout, we can do whatever we want in whatever scale we want. This is a thirty-one uh, blocks of diameter semicircle, so it's very big. Uh, but in this layout, it looks so small. But anyways, this is because. We're gonna do the control panel first, right? Because we have to uh, have the control panel to select the, the ray lines. And well, I decided to make it in a semi-circle because of course this, I want to have it like almost everything sy uh, symmetric. And if I did this the control panel like a square, like we always, or we normally do, it would look a bit weird in this setup, right? So instead, I decided to mark the semicircle and we're gonna have 13 inputs. Why 13, you may ask? Well, because we have 11 modules, 11 districts for the villagers, plus the one uh, to return to the simplification chamber, so that's 12, and the one that will take the villager out of the system to take them uh, wherever we want, right? So that's 13 inputs. And yeah, the only thing I gotta do is basically divide the semicircle semi into 13 things. Uh, and I guess I'm gonna mark them with a node block already. So, what do you think, guys? I think it looks... Yeah, it looks fitting, it looks cool. Um, I think we nailed the figure, actually, the shape. So that's great. And the way we're gonna do this is with an RS nor latch, sorry. If you do not know what an RS nor latch is, don't worry, it's very simple. So it means a RS, uh, well, the nor gate and then latch, of course. And what it means is just an array that will have uh, some logic into it, logic uh, uh, with inputs. So basically, if you click one input, all of the other ones are going to turn off and that one's going to be uh, on. And that's what we're going to do. Um, normally, RS knowledges are like vertical and you have the inputs like aligned in line. But we are going to do something uh, a bit different and we're going to do it like um, horizontally. And all of the inputs are going to be in this shape, in this semicircular shape. And I've already kind of worked out how we're going to do it. It's actually very easy. Let me refill my rockets and I'll teach you in a second how to do it. Goodness sakes, guys. My resources are vanishing. Uh, I'm down to two stacks of rockets, counting this one. And, well, I don't have any more uh, sugar cane for rockets. Oh, actually, that reminds me. I need to harvest that right now. Um, and also, I'm completely out of cobblestone, which I never thought um, that would be something that would happen because um, at the beginning of the series like two and a half years ago which saying it out loud it, it does sound uh, well it does make sense right because uh, at the beginning of the series I used to mine a lot I wanted to get as many resources as I could from mining because I knew that afterward I would never go mining again um, so I did that and I thought I would, that, uh, cobblestone that I got would last me for a long time. And it finally has come the day when I'm gone. I'm out of, uh, cobblestone. I, I think I have, like, literally two pieces of cobblestone. So that's not great. 
Fortunately, a cobblestone farm is very easy to do. Actually, I have a tutorial in my channel if you want to check it out. And it's they're very easy to do, so um, I'm not worried that much about that because we can make one in like five minutes and that's it. And it gives a lot of cobblestone, more than we need um, in an hour, so that's that's great. But for now, we're going to start with the RS Norleches, and as you can see, we are placing some droppers. I'm going to place them around, and then I'll tell you what they are for. So, guys, let me show you how those droppers work in the system. So, droppers are very useful when doing logic redstone, because they can act as memory cells. What is a memory cell? It's something that will remember something, right? It's a, it's a little circuit that will remember something. And droppers can remember when they have an item uh, inside of it, because, well, uh, it acts like a bit, right? It's a one. They g give off a signal. And droppers will try to keep that, that item as long as we need them to keep it, right? Because they will only spit that item when we tell them to. Um, not, not like hoppers that will keep that item, but the, the second that they have the chance to actually get rid of the item, they will. They will pass it to the next container, right? And also, droppers are very useful because they can uh, input those items into other containers or other droppers, right? So, for example, we can do something like this. where We have the item, we have the, the, the output, the, the one output or the... Yeah, like one and then the zero. <laughs> so one is uh, powered and zero is not not powered. So we have the one and whenever we want the zero, we can just power it and send it to the other uh, dropper. And it's like a memory cell because it will remember, actually if we power it as many times as we want from now, the thing will remember that it, it doesn't have an item anymore until we power the other dropper. So they're very cool. These RS Norleches are very cool. And using droppers also allow us to have like a double RS Norlech because we have a 1 here and a 0 here. Or we can have the 1 on the other side and the 0 here. So it's not just like one single output. Of course, for this little system, it's very simple. It's a very simple system. So we just need one output. Um which we are taking with this compressor. Now, another thing that droppers have is that they can be um, weak powered or strongly powered. So with an observer, we can strongly power one of the droppers and we can weakly powered at the same time the other dropper. And because of the update order, this uh, dropper will um, trigger first and then this one. So that means the item will jump to this one, but very fast, actually in the same tick, it will jump back to the first dropper, which means that uh, no matter how many times we keep giving a signal to these droppers, they're going to stay the same. So it's kind of like a, a double RS Norledge, if we can say it like that. But that's how it works. And afterward, um, we of course read the dropper with a comparator. We place a piston here at the top with a... Well, let's, let's actually place the slabs first, like so with a composter here at the top with one item inside of it, another comparator here reading the composter, and that way we can power on the lamps. And as you can see, whenever we give an extra input to this, it will never change until, of course, another of these ones are activated. Now, the way we are going to do that is by using some uh, double-sided repeaters or uh, like two-way repeaters which I'm going to do in a second. But basically, that's how these RS Norleches works. Work, sorry. Now, um, there's one little bit missing at the bottom, which actually will power uh, the dispenser, that the dropper that we're reading, so that we can reset it. But we're going to do that after we place the, the two-way repeaters, right? Alrighty, guys. So... Uh, the two-way repeaters have been installed over there. Uh, it's it's a mess of two-way repeaters. <laughs> I will explain that in a second. Um, but the last step is to finally connect these uh, redstone lines to this dropper again. So we're going to use a trapdoor here at the side with an observer on top of them, just like so. And then a block right on top of the observer. And that should be enough to power all of the observers. 
Now, uh, let's test it because I haven't actually tested this system. I just um, work, it, work it out uh, as, I, as I went through it. So, I'm going to test it with this one. It should technically work, I think. Oh, that was satisfying, guys. Amazing, amazing. So, the two-way repeaters work. And if we were to click this one, we should see all of them turn off. Perfect. And only that one... Only this one turning on. So that's amazing, guys. All right, all right. So it works. Um, let's try it. Let's try it with the middle one. Perfect. <laughs> amazing. Uh, so basically, this system allows us to turn on whichever input we want. It will turn off all the other ones, and we'll we'll keep that input that we turn on um, on. It doesn't allow us to. To like turn off all of the input inputs at once, we could try and well not try, but we could include a system that will turn uh, every single input out off. Sorry, but I mean it's not needed, but because our villager once it's zombified or once we send it off from one of the districts to here to the center, uh, it's gonna have to land somewhere, right? Um, we always need to have at least one destination on in this thing. But anyways, the way the repeaters work, it's actually very interesting. I think this is the, are the like the easiest way um, to make two-way repeaters. But there's plenty of them. I really like the one with uh, sticky pistons and redstone blocks. But uh, for this application, I thought, well, let's let's go with something simple. We don't really need it to be super fast. So, of course, repeaters and comparators are the way to go here. Um, I put the repeaters in two ticks because otherwise we get a double trigger, which is not a, a problem, really, because, uh, well, our thing is, like, very, very slow, anyways. So, and, of course, we can actually have some time to wait because we're going to activate this before we actually send the villager into the zombification chamber or to send it from the districts. To over here because we need to select the destination beforehand, right? So, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's a bit slower. Um, anyways, it's not that slow, really. So, the way it works is we send a signal through these redstone lines from whichever uh, module we need. For example, we send a signal through here. It's going to come through this redstone line. And it's going to touch this comparator, right? Once it touches this comparator, the comparator is going to, like, kind of... Uh, mimic the signal and send it to the repeater the, the repeater is gonna uh, output a signal of 15 so the maximum redstone signal um, it's gonna give 15 to here it's gonna be 14 here 13 here and it's this comparator is gonna try to send the signal back but it's only receiving a signal of 13 from the uh, input part of this comparator and then the subtraction mode is gonna give it like the maximum signal it's not in subtract mode it's just in uh, comparator comparator mode which means that if we if it receives a maximum signal from the side it's gonna uh, cancel out the signal from the back so um, that means that it's not gonna be able to send the signal back which means that the repeater is gonna go that way and the same happens in this way. Oh, sorry. The same thing happens if the signal is coming down from this redstone uh, line to over there. The comparator thingy is going to do its thing and it's going to only allow the signal to go that way, which means that it's, it, it, if, if it tries to circle back, which it will, it's not going to be able to because this comparator will not receive any signal or will not be able to output any signal, I should say. And that way we only see one triggering. If we uh, send the signal from here, it's going to go that way, but not back. And if we receive a signal from any of the other ones, because we have plenty of uh, double repeaters, or well, two-way repeaters for that, um, it's not going to receive uh, the signal like twice, right? So <laughs> I don't know if my explanation is clear enough, but it's a very simple system, basically. And... Yeah, these ones that are sharing the same redstone line, it doesn't matter because this design is actually meant to uh, to be able to handle a signal at the same tick. It doesn't really matter because we have the redstone lamps there. So that means a double signal that we get on this dropper. So uh, yeah, even though we get like the same tick uh, 
I mean, the signal at the same tick, it's gonna uh, keep it powered because of that redstone lamp. So that's pretty cool. And I think that's about it, about this little system here, guys. I'm really in love with this RS Norledge that I designed here. Um, the reason why I wanted to design this first, or to build this first, was because, look at how massive it is. It, it occupies a lot of space, and it's not like it is super uh, massive, it's actually very compact. But the thing is, the redstone lines occupy a lot of, of uh, horizontal space. And we have to connect each, with, well, each other with each other, <laughs> all together, I should say. And... Um, yeah, that, that creates a lot of space usage. And yeah, the reason why I wanted to build it first was because this little system is going to uh, well let the villager fall down into a rail line. And I wanted to kind of know how much space I would need for this system to be able to lower down the rail line as much as uh, I needed to. Oh man, guys. I don't know if you can actually tell if that I'm excited about this project uh, because of the tone of my voice, but I'm really, I really am. I love that uh, little system that we did. I love the all of the systems that we've done here. And unfortunately, um, well, the episode is already quite long, so I'm gonna have to end it right here. We didn't get to install the ray lines, but I will do so uh, for the next episode. Also, some other things like the iron farms and whatnot. Um, but also, I wanted to show you these guys. I found a flaw in the system. So remember how we had some trapdoors down here, open trapdoors and fence gates uh, back there uh, where the node block is. So apparently, villagers, when the trapdoor is open, they do not see, they're not able to see their workstation and therefore they're not able to restock. Um, <laughs> they basically are clueless of what's happening. Uh, my guess is that they think they're gonna fall down. But I had to change those for uh, end rods, and they seem to work fine. I actually have been trading with these guys for redstone, and this was one of your guys' comments uh, in the in the last episode that I should start with the clerics because they actually gave me redstone to continue the project, and it was such a great idea. We spent so much time down here that um, yeah, it's so comfortable to just come every day and buy all of the redstone from these clerics. But yeah, that works. Also, I changed the fence gate for a node block because it's a bit more comfortable to just click on it. I'm not going to click on it because we already had one casualty as I was doing the fix uh, here. Um, to the river, of course. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's uh, the, the fix. And yeah, if you have any comments in this episode, please let me know. I also had this idea about naming the villagers um, with names of famous characters of TV shows and movies. They don't have to be real characters. They can be like Do Dr. House, which is one of the names that I want to give uh, to one of these guys. Um, or any other that you that you like, that, that's maybe your favorite character for a movie, from a movie or a TV show. Please leave me let me know down in the comments and we may be able to uh, name all these villagers. Of course, most of them, I'm, I'm going to have to uh, come up with them myself because we are gonna house 200 villagers in this in this system so it's a lot but let me let me know down in the comments also are there any suggestions or any dislikes maybe that you have but anyhow um that's it for today guys thank you so so much for watching and yeah i will see you in the next one also if you ha if you like the video please hit the thumbs up consider subscribing if you would like to see more content like this more redstone and whatnot and yeah, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Goodbye, have a great day, have a great week. And yeah, goodbye again. <laughs>